Hello everybody. I'm going to have a really fun turn for you today. Um, this is a Celtic knot blank that was made for me by a good buddy of mine, Bob Hadeen. And Bob made the Celtic knot in UofL themed colors. So I truly appreciate that. You all know UofL is my alma mater. I love my, love my college. Um, he also sent me this carpenter pencil kit which is really cool. It's a nice thick lead, so it holds up really well when you're marking uh, things in the shop. Um, the other nice thing is, and you'll be able to see this when I put it together, I'll show it. The back, the cap here, or the plunger, which ejects the lead, uh, you pull it off and there's a pencil sharpener inside of it, so you can keep that nice lead really sharp. Um, this kit uses the same bushings as the Majestic Squire. Uh, you simply, you don't use the middle bushing, you use both end bushings and uh, it should be a fun turn. What we're gonna to do today is he made the blank way longer than necessary. So we're gonna kind of figure out where we want this uh, tube to set. We'll get a little piece of the blank cut off. Then we'll get some epoxy. We'll get this tube glued in and uh, we'll be ready to turn next time we come to the shop. You can see where I've marked the blank. This material is gonna be removed. And if you lay the tube on there, you'll see that there's about a 16th of an inch past the tube on that side and about a 16th past this side. And I wanted to keep the tube as far toward the top of the blank as possible because I think it'll just be more aesthetically pleasing with the Celtic knot. This tube came pre-scuffed, but I'm gonna go ahead and scuff it again. And the reason why is you don't know what type of residue could be on the blank. Uh, I also don't know just how deep that scuffing is. I mean, you can see it, but I wanna make sure I really grind up the surface of the blank so the epoxy has something to stick to. I think that's gonna be much better. I started by cleaning out the inside of my blank with a bottle brush, get any dust out of there. Uh, we don't want that in there because if you think about it in your garage, if you spill oil or antifreeze on the floor, you throw a little kitty litter on it or a little uh, oil dry and it absorbs all of the liquid. Same thing happens with dust. The wood dust in the blank uh, will absorb the glue and you won't get as good of a bond between your blank uh, and your uh, tube. Spread a little bit of epoxy on here. It's really cold today, so my epoxy is, uh, you can tell, it's very, very thick. So we'll get it spread on the tube. Make sure we get it all the way down to the end. Tried not to mix up too much. Okay. okay we'll go ahead and get some of this excess off of here. We'll spread that on the rest of the tube. Got the insertion tool, and I'm going to go ahead and push this the rest of the way in. Well, almost the rest of the way in. We're going to stop right about there, and I'm going to clean this excess epoxy off. Now we'll go ahead and put her down into the blank a little bit more. And let me clean off the little glob of epoxy at the top. There we are. I'm gonna set this blank aside to dry. Uh, it will have to dry overnight and we'll be ready to turn on that next trip to the shop. Got the blank chucked up. I've stropped my skew and we are ready to turn.
turning and sanding went well. Let's clean the blank up with a little denatured alcohol. That's gonna look really nice. The CA is finished. I'm ready to begin micro meshing. This blank should start really popping once we get rid of the orange peel from the CA. I got so excited about micro meshing that I forgot to remove the nonstick bushings. Uh, so I got through the first two pads, 15 seconds a pad. Now I'm gonna go through the other seven, same regiment, 15 seconds each. Then we'll come back and take a look at this right before we put a little wax on it. The blank has been micro meshed. It looks stunning. I'm ready to add some Renaissance wax. I'm ready to press this blank into the kit. I think we're gonna press the cap in first. So we'll pull this bushing out. Place our cap coupler into the back of the blank. Let me flip this around so that it's against the rubber grommet. Okay, let's take a look at our fit. Very nice, I like it, I like it a lot. All right. Oh, you know what we did or didn't do? I did not put the clip on here. So let me get a punch. I'm gonna knock this out. Then we're gonna repress it with the clip. Okay, I'm back. We're gonna use the soft grip pliers. We're gonna grab the barrel. I've got the proper size punch. We'll drop it in. I always like to put this in my hand so that the part doesn't shoot across the shop. It doesn't take much. A couple of pops. Get the punch out of there. There's our part. I'll put my bushing back in for pressing. We'll drop the clip over the cap and we'll pop it back into the pin. Now let me take a peek and see if there's any place that I should put the clip. Really doesn't look like it. Hmm. Okay, it doesn't really matter. So I'll have it go down right down the center of, one of where one of the knots meet. Okay, nice tight press. Once again, checking our fit. Everything looks good. Okay, that's why I keep my punches and my soft grip pliers handy because it's easy to forget to press a piece. I haven't been making pins for a while. And um, well, because of that, you know, I forgot a step. You kind of get out of practice. Okay, there's our nib coupler. That looks really good. Here's our, our lead mechanism. We're gonna pull this off, off the back. This piece is actually a pencil sharpener. So we'll lay that aside. This feeds through the uh, front, or the nib section of the pin. Press her back together. I've done something wrong here. Let me, uh, what did I do wrong? Look at that, there's no way. Hmm. Let me grab the instructions for this. I found the reason why we aren't able to properly assemble this pin. Looking at the instructions, the tube length is 3.205 inches. Placing my calipers against the tube, you can see that we're about three quarters of an inch too short on this tube. Uh, this is a 3 8 inch tube. I'm gonna see if I have any more of these in the shop. And if I do, I will get one cut to the proper length and uh, we will remake the tube for this kit. Unfortunately, I won't be able to use um, the blank that Bob supplied because I've already 
uh, epoxied it to uh, the tube that he sent, uh, which I think it just must have been a mix-up. I'm sure he thought that was the right tube because the blank was just slightly larger than that tube. Um, but let me go ahead and work on that and see if I have the proper diameter tube to be able to rework this pen. I did a little digging and I found a 3 8 inch tube, 10 inches long, and it fits the bushings just fine. So I think we're gonna be okay. My calipers are still set to 3.205. So I'm gonna mark the uh, tube. There's my mark. And then I'm gonna go a little bit past that mark. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this tube here, and then we're gonna sand this down on the disc sander to, hit to this point, which is 3.205, and we'll have the exact length tube that we need for this pen. The reason why I like to make the tube long is because my little pipe cutter here will actually chamfer the end of the tube, and I won't be able to fit any components into it. This thing works really well. You just twist the tube, tighten the bolt, twist the tube, tighten the bolt, and you repeat this process until it cuts the tube. These tube cutters can be picked up at your big box store, and I get the long tubes either off of eBay, Amazon, or Penn State Industries. All right, now you can see we chamfered that tube. Look at the other end. Even without the chamfer, that's kind of a rough cut. So we're gonna take this over to the sanding disc and we're gonna sand it down to this point. You can see the mark on the tube and we're just gonna sand until we hit that mark. Get all of the dust out of it. And let's put it between our calipers and look at that. We have a nice tight fit at 3.205 inches. We've got a tube to the exact dimension we need. The next step is to disassemble the components from the old tube and we'll be ready to begin making our new pen. First step in disassembly is to unthread the nib. Grab a hold of the housing there, pull that out. Slide that back in. Now I'm gonna go get a couple of punches and we'll begin removing the components from the blank. This one could be a little tricky to disassemble because normally uh, your nib uh, will come down to a cone and you can get a punch that goes through the back of your pen and presses against the inside of that nib to knock it out. But on this particular pen, the hole, the diameter of the hole inside is the same on both ends. So I'm gonna to have to hold it at a bit of an angle and back from left to right or from side to side to see if I can force this out without damaging it. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so I'm pushing my thumb against it to hold it to the front, a couple of taps, then I'll put it the other direction. Oh, there it is, we got it. And if we look, we did not do any damage, that's good. Now, let me grab a little larger punch, the next size up, and we'll knock the cap fin uh, finial out. Okay, here's the exact size for a 3 8 inch. Drop it in there. There we go. There are my components, my clip and the back ferrule, and it is not damaged. I'm gonna drop everything into the bag. At this point, uh, I'm gonna select a new tube or a new blank for the tube that we made. And here's that tube and we'll begin the process all over. I probably will not show it because you already have seen the entire process for turning um, a blank for this pen. We just need a blank that is a tad bit longer than the blank we had. I'd like to thank my good buddy, Bob Hadeen for sending me this custom made Celtic knot blank. I appreciate you putting the time into making this and I truly appreciate you sending it to me as well as the carpenter kit, the carpenter pencil kit. Um, I just wanted to show this video because sometimes, guys, things go wrong. I don't know if maybe Bob received this kit and they sent him the wrong tube with it, or if maybe he pulled the tube out of the kit and just got it confused with another uh, tube from another kit. Things like that happen to all of us. They happen to me from time to time as well. And I wanted to show you that. When something like this happens, don't just get upset. Don't just throw it all away. Stop and think about what you can do. Now, in my case, Luckily, I keep spare tubes around my shop and I have punches 
and soft grip pliers, and I'm able to take the pin apart. I'm able to turn a custom tube to the exact length that we need, same diameter as this one, and the next opportunity I get, I'll go up in my loft, I'll find a really nice blank, and I will turn myself a carpenter pencil because I'm looking forward to having it in the shop because there are many projects that I could use it on. So thank you, Bob, for sending those things to me. Thank you everyone for watching this video. I'd like you all to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again anytime. And remember, problems like this are simply opportunities waiting for a solution.